Eddie Hassel was born on July 16, 1990, in Corsicana, Texas, USA. He is known for The Kids Are All Right, 2010, Surface, 2005, and the 2013 film Jobs, where he played the young Chris Espinosa. Hassel was shot dead during a carjacking after leaving his girlfriend's house on November 1, 2020, around 1.50 a.m. in Grand Prairie, Texas, in what police describe as a random robbery. He was 30 years old. Police arrested an 18-year-old man within days of the incident and charged him with murder. David Huffman, an immensely talented American leading and supporting actor on film and television in the 1970s and 80s, had his life cut tragically short. On February 27, 1985, tragedy struck when David Huffman lost his life at the age of 39. He was involved in a fatal altercation with a 16-year-old at a San Diego park that ended in him being stabbed to death with a screwdriver. Dick Coleman, a prominent actor in movies and television during the late 50s and 60s, made a significant career shift by leaving Hollywood to pursue stage work, touring with renowned productions such as how to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, and Half a Sixpence. Coleman was murdered by three intruders in 1980 during a robbery at his residence. The killers were later caught and convicted. A fictionalized account of Coleman's life, Up with the Sun by Thomas Mallon, was published in February 2023. Karen Cupsonit was a stage, film, and television personality known for The Little Shop of Horrors, 1960, the Gertrude Berg Show, 1961, and G.E. True, 1962, and was also the daughter of Chicago newspaper columnist Irv Cupsinet. Cupsinet was strangled to death in her apartment by an unknown assailant on November 28, 1963. She was only 22 years old. Jennifer Helene Maxwell was an American film and television actress, probably best remembered for starring alongside Elvis Presley in the 1961 film Blue Hawaii. In the afternoon of June 10, 1981, shortly after her separation from Irvin Roeder, a successful attorney, Maxwell and Roeder were shot and killed in the lobby of Maxwell's Beverly Hills condo. She was 39 years old. The shooting was believed to be a botched hit on Maxwell, orchestrated by Roeder over pending divorce finances. Roeder, a defense attorney with reputed mafia connections, had allegedly arranged to receive a survivable wound from the hitman as a diversion. But in the event, the wound to his abdomen proved fatal, and he died a few hours after the shooting. Salvatore Mineo Jr. was best known for his role as John Plato Crawford in the drama film Rebel Without a Cause, 1955, which earned him a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor at the age of 17. Mineo also starred in films such as Crime in the Streets, Giant, both 1956, and Exodus, 1960, for which he won a Golden Globe. On the night of February 12, 1976, Minio returned home from a rehearsal for the play P.S. Your Cat is Dead. After parking his car in the carport, he was stabbed in the heart by Lionel Ray Williams, a young pizza delivery man who thought he might have money and wanted to rob him. Minio was 37 years old. Williams was convicted and sentenced in March 1979 to 57 years in prison for killing Minio. Stephanie Mosley, a talented actress, was born on February 14, 1984, in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. She made a name for herself in Hollywood through her notable roles in films such as The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 1, 2011, Idlewild, 2006, and Mirror Mirror, 2012. In a tragic incident of domestic violence that turned fatal, Stephanie Mosley was murdered by her husband Earl Hayes on December 8, 2014, Hayes killed his wife and then took his own life after discovering that Mosley had been cheating on him. L.A. police found both of them shot to death in their apartment, Mosley in the bathtub and Hayes in the bedroom. Adrienne Shelley was an American actress, film director, and screenwriter. She became known for roles in films such as Hal Hartley's The Unbelievable Truth, 1989, and Trust, 1990. She wrote, co-starred in, and directed the 2007 posthumously released film Waitress, which later became a hit Broadway show. Adrienne Shelley was murdered on November 1, 2006 by Diego Pilco, a 19-year-old construction worker from Ecuador who entered her apartment when the door was left ajar and tried to steal her purse. He was arrested on November 6 and would be sentenced to life in prison. 
Dorothy Stratton's life was both glorious and tragic. She rose to fame in the late 1970s as a Playboy Playmate and then embarked on an acting career, appearing in films such as Galaxina and They All Laughed. But Stratton's life and promising career were tragically cut short when she was murdered. Dorothy Stratton was murdered by her estranged husband and manager Paul Snyder on August 14, 1980 at the age of 20, after they met to discuss divorce proceedings. Her death inspired two movies, a book and several songs, the 1981 TV movie Death of a Centerfold, the Dorothy Stratton story, the 1983 movie Star 80, the book The Killing of the Unicorn, and the songs Californication by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Best Was Yet to Come by Brian Adams, and Cover Girl by Prism. Sharon Tate was a talented actress and model during the 1960s. Starting with small television roles, she quickly caught the attention of audiences. Her undeniable beauty and charm led her to become a sought-after model and actress. Gracing the covers of numerous fashion magazines and movie roles, Tate was hailed as one of Hollywood's most promising newcomers. On August 8, 1969, Tate would have dinner at El Coyote Cafe with Jay Sebring, Wojciech Frakowski, and Abigail Folger, returning at about 10.30 p.m. Shortly after midnight, Tate, Sebring, Frakowski and Folger were murdered by members of the Manson family cult. She was eight months pregnant at the time. Marie Trintignant, a remarkable French film and stage actress, she graced the silver screen in over 30 movies, captivating audiences with her talent and charisma. On the 26th of July, while in a hotel room, her rock star boyfriend, Bertrand Cantat, flew into a jealous rage during an argument over a text message sent to Trintignant by her husband, from whom she was separated. Cantat proceeded to severely beat Trintignant. She died from swelling of the brain at the age of 41 on August 1, 2003. Her rock star boyfriend would only serve four years in prison before being released. Gianni Versace, the renowned Italian fashion designer and the founder of Versace, an internationally acclaimed luxury fashion house. His name has become synonymous with luxury and style. On the morning of July 15, 1997, Versace took a walk on Ocean Drive to retrieve his morning magazines. Versace had returned and was climbing the steps of his Miami Beach mansion when a man in shorts, a t-shirt, and carrying a backpack approached and shot him at point-blank range. He was pronounced dead at Jackson Memorial Hospital at 9.21 a.m. He was 50 years old at the time of his death. Jose Duane Ricardo Onfroy, known professionally as XXX Tentation and commonly referred to as simply X, was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. On June 18, 2018, upon leaving Riva Motorsports Motorcycle and Marine Superstore in Deerfield Beach, Florida, he was blocked from exiting the parking lot by a black Dodge Journey SUV. Two armed men exited the SUV and approached the rapper while he was sitting in the driver's seat. A brief struggle occurred and the gun-toting men reached inside Onfroy's vehicle, stole a small Louis Vuitton bag containing $50,000, and shot the rapper multiple times. Roger Troutman was an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and the founder of the band Zap, who helped spearhead the funk movement. His music was used in the movies Venom 2018, Iron Man 2 2010, and Pixels 2015, on the morning of April 25, 1999, Troutman was found shot and critically wounded outside his Northwest Dayton recording studio around 7 a.m. According to doctors, the 47-year-old had been shot several times in the torso. Troutman died during surgery at the Good Samaritan Hospital and Health Center. Roger's brother Larry was found dead in a car a few blocks away with a single self-inflicted gunshot wound. The car matched the description of a vehicle leaving the scene of Roger Troutman's shooting, according to witnesses, which means Roger was murdered by his brother. Tupac Shakur, known by his stage names Tupac and Machiavelli, was widely regarded as one of the most influential and successful rappers of all time, having sold more than 75 million records worldwide. On the night of September 7, 1996, Shakur was in Las Vegas, Nevada to attend the Mike Tyson boxing match. After the fight at about 11.15 p.m. at a stoplight, a white four-door late-model Cadillac sedan pulled up to the passenger side and an occupant rapidly fired into the car. 
Shakur was struck four times. He was taken to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, where he was heavily sedated and put on life support. In the intensive care unit on the afternoon of September 13, 1996, Shakur died from internal bleeding. Selena Quintanilla Perez, known simply as Selena, was an extraordinary American Tejano singer. Often hailed as the queen of Tejano music, Selena's talent and captivating performances catapulted her to become one of the most celebrated Mexican-American entertainers of the late 20th century. On March 31, 1995, 23-year-old Selena met with Yolanda Saldivar, her fan club president and manager of her boutique stores, to confront her about embezzling money. They met at the Days Inn in Corpus Christi. Once confronted, Saldivar got a gun from her purse and pointed it at Selena. As Selena attempted to flee, Saldivar shot her. Critically wounded, Selena ran towards the lobby. She collapsed on the floor as the clerk called an ambulance and police. Before collapsing, Selena named Saldivar as her assailant. She was arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Jay Sebring, a prominent figure in the world of hairstyling, a celebrity hairstylist and the founder of the iconic hairstyling corporation, Sebring International, had his life cut tragically short when he fell victim to the gruesome acts committed by members of the notorious Manson family. On August 8, 1969, Sebring, Tate and two others went to a Mexican restaurant together. After they returned to Sharon Tate's home on Cielo Drive, Patricia Krenwinkel, Susan Atkins and Charles Tex Watson, members of the Manson family, entered the home and murdered Jay Sebring, Sharon Tate, coffee heiress Abigail Folger, Polish writer Wojciech Frykowski, and Stephen Parent, a friend of the property's caretaker. Merlin Santana, beginning his career in the early 1990s, Santana was best known for his roles as Rudy Huxtable's boyfriend Stanley on The Cosby Show, Marcus Dixon on Getting By, Marcus Henry in Under One Roof, and Romeo Santana on the WB sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show. On November 9, 2002, Santana was murdered while sitting in a car in Los Angeles. Santana and his friend, actor Brandon Adams, had just left an acquaintance's home in the Crenshaw district when Damian Andre Gates, 19 at the time, fired the shot that ended Santana's life. Daniel Joseph Locken was a remarkable actor and dancer. Locken's most memorable role came in the 1969 film Hello, Dolly, where he portrayed the lovable character of Barnaby Tucker. On the night of August 21, 1977, Locken went to a gay bar in Garden Grove, California. He left the bar with a 34-year-old unemployed medical clerk, Charles Leslie Hopkins. Several hours later, Hopkins called police to say that a man had entered his apartment and tried to rob him. Upon arrival, police found Locken's body on the floor of Hopkins' apartment. He had been stabbed 100 times. Hopkins claimed he had no idea how the body got in his apartment. He was arrested and charged with Locken's murder. Diane Fossey, an American primatologist and conservationist, dedicated her life to the study and protection of mountain gorillas, conducting groundbreaking research in the mountain forests of Rwanda. Gorillas in the Mist was a movie made about her life. In the early morning of December 27, 1985, Fossey was discovered murdered in the bedroom of her cabin located at the far edge of the camp in the Virunga Mountains, Rwanda. It is widely believed that she was killed in connection with her lifelong crusade against poaching. Christina Grimmie was a singer and contestant on season six of The Voice, finishing in third place. Adam Levine, her coach on the show, announced in the finale that regardless of the results, he would sign her to his label. Lil Wayne also offered to sign her to his label, Young Money Entertainment. She had a very promising career in her future. On June 10, 2016, Grimmie performed at the Plaza Live in Orlando, Florida. After the show, Grimmie signed autographs inside the venue. At 10.24 p.m., she was approached by 27-year-old Kevin James Loible without saying a word. Thinking he was too shy to greet her, she opened her arms to give him a hug. Loible then pulled out a gun and shot her three times at point-blank range. Ronnie Sue Chasen was a Hollywood heavyweight, once representing such actors as Michael Douglas, as well as musicians such as Hans Zimmer and Mark Isham. Chasen also directed the Academy Award campaigns for more than 100 films during her career, including Driving Miss Daisy in 1989 and The Hurt Locker in 2009. Chasen was shot in a drive-by shooting in Beverly Hills on November 16, 2010, at approximately 12.28 a.m. 
as she was driving home from the Hollywood premiere of the film Burlesque. Christy Schoencod was a Spanish-born chef who came to prominence as a contestant in the eighth season of the Food Network series, Food Network Star. She started a successful movie catering business and was known as the Hollywood chef to the stars. Christy and her husband Joseph were reported missing on March 15, 2015, when their family was unable to reach them. An investigation by police led to the arrest of local contractor and neighbor Robert Jason Owens, who was charged with their murders. Jing Bai was an actress from China. She was best known for her roles in Kung Fu Wing Chun 2010, T. Ren 2009, and Three Kingdoms 2008. She was married to Chung Hai Zhou, a Chinese billionaire. On the 28th of February 2012, Bai Jing met with her husband in their apartment in Chao Yang regarding their divorce proceedings. However, he stabbed her three times and Bai Jing died on the spot. He took his own life shortly afterwards. Dimebag Daryl was the guitarist of the iconic bands Pantera and Damage Plan, which he co-founded alongside his brother Vinnie Paul. Dimebag's talent and passion for music were truly unmatched. Many consider him to be one of the greatest metal guitarists of all time. On December 8, 2004, Damage Plan was performing at the Al Rosa Villa nightclub in Columbus, Ohio. Nathan Gale, a deranged fan, rushed onto the stage as the band played its first song and shot Dimebag multiple times. The band's head of security then tackled the shooter but was fatally shot in the ensuing struggle. Three others were wounded before the police officer entered the club and shot the shooter. John Lennon gained worldwide fame as the founder, co-songwriter, co-lead vocalist, and rhythm guitarist of the Beatles. His songwriting partnership with Paul McCartney remains one of the most successful in music history. In New York City, at approximately 5 p.m. on the 8th of December, 1980, Lennon autographed a copy of Double Fantasy for Mark David Chapman. He then left for a recording session at the record plant. After the session, Lennon and Ono returned to the Dakota in a limousine at around 10.50 p.m. They left the vehicle and walked through the archway of the building. Chapman then shot Lennon twice in the back and twice in the shoulder at close range. Lennon was rushed in a police cruiser to the emergency room of Roosevelt Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival at 11.15 p.m. Phil Hartman joined the NBC sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live as a cast member and stayed for eight seasons until 1994. Nicknamed Glue for his ability to hold the show together and help other cast members, he won a Primetime Emmy Award for his SNL work in 1989. He also starred as Bill McNeil in the sitcom News Radio. On May 27, 1998, Hartman's wife, Bryn, visited the Italian restaurant Buca di Beppo in Encino, California, with producer and writer Christine Zander, who said she was in a good frame of mind. They had drinks. After returning home, Bryn and Hartman had a heated argument, after which he went to bed. She entered his bedroom sometime before 3 o'clock in the morning on May 28, 1998, and as he slept, she fatally shot him. She then took her own life. Rebecca Schaefer was a well-known model and actress. She began her career by modeling when she was a teenager and later transitioned into the acting industry. In 1986, she landed the role of Patricia Patty Russell in the CBS comedy, My Sister Sam. She was shot and died when she was 21 years old by Robert John Bardo, a 19-year-old crazy fan who had been stalking her. Schaefer's death helped lead to the passage in California of legislation aimed at preventing stalking. In 2004, Monica Spear was named Miss Venezuela, and in 2005, she came in fourth place at the Miss Universe pageant she would go on to become a famous and successful soap opera star. Died on January 6, 2014, at the age of 29. A group of thieves in Venezuela shot her and her ex-husband to death on a road. Their car hit a blunt item that was put in the middle of the road on purpose. When they stopped because of a flat tire, the gang started shooting at them. However, their daughter, who was five years old, was shot in the leg, but she survived. Carl Switzer was best known for his role as Alfalfa in the short subject series Our Gang. Switzer began his career as a child actor in the mid-1930s, appearing in the Our Gang series as Alfalfa, one of the series' most popular and best-remembered characters. After leaving the series in 1940, Switzer struggled to find substantial roles because of typecasting. 
As an adult, he appeared mainly in bit parts and B-movies. It was a fateful day when Carl found himself in a distressing situation, losing a friend's beloved canine companion. The friend demanded $50 or his dog back. A fight broke out and Switzer was shot and killed on January 21, 1959. British character actor Peter Arne appeared in over 50 films, including Moonraker, Conspiracy of Hearts, and Victor Victoria. He played villains in multiple Blake Edwards' Pink Panther films and had a career that spanned over 40 years. On the 1st of August, 1983, neighbors reported hearing a violent argument coming from his home. Arne was later found inside his house, bludgeoned to death with a log from his fireplace. The prime suspect in Arne's murder was a school teacher from Verona, Italy, who was now homeless and living in a local park. Arne had been providing him with food. Four days later, this man took his own life before police could arrest him. Lloyd Avery's breakout role was in John Singleton's Oscar-nominated film Boys in the Hood, 1991. In 2001, soon after wrapping his latest movie, Avery was arrested and charged with a double homicide for shooting two random people, for which he was sentenced to life in prison. He was murdered on September 4, 2005 in Crescent City, California at the age of 36. He was beaten and strangled by his cellmate at the Pelican Bay State Prison. Eva Judith Barcy was an American child actress. She started her career in commercials, TV shows, and the movie Jaws the Revenge. She voiced Ducky in The Land Before Time and Anne Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. A network talent scout found her at a San Fernando Valley skating rink at the age of five. Her father, who obviously had mental issues, shot her and her mother on July 25, 1988, then shot himself. Susan Cabot was an acclaimed American film stage and television actress. Known for her memorable roles in Western films such as Tomahawk, 1951, The Duel at Silver Creek, 1952, and Gunsmoke, 1953, Cabot established herself as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry of the time. On December 10th, 1986, Cabot's 22-year-old son bludgeoned her to death in her home in the Encino neighborhood of Los Angeles with a weightlifting bar. He was charged with second-degree murder. A judge convicted her son of not murder but involuntary manslaughter in the 1986 bludgeoning death of his mother. He received only three years probation on November 28, 1989 and walked out of court a free man. Sam Cooke, the legendary American singer and songwriter, many consider to be one of the most influential soul artists of all time. He's often hailed as the King of Soul for his distinctive vocals. The murder of Sam Cooke on December 11, 1964, sent shockwaves through the music industry. The tragic incident took place at the Hacienda Motel, located at 91st and South Figueroa Streets in South Central Los Angeles. Responding to reports of a shooting and a kidnapping at the motel, police discovered Cook's lifeless body. It was determined that he had suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the chest. The motel's manager, Bertha Franklin, said she shot him in self-defense. Her account was immediately called into question by Cook's acquaintances. Tara Correa McMullen was an American actress, known for her captivating portrayal of Graciela Reyes, a gang member, on the popular CBS TV series Judging Amy. In early 2005, 16-year-old Korea McMullen moved into her own apartment in Inglewood, California, and as art imitated life, she began dating a gang member 10 years her senior. On the evening of October 21, 2005, she was shot to death by gang member Damian Watts. Bob Crane was best known for starring in the CBS hit comedy series Hogan's Heroes, but he also hosted the number one rated morning radio show in the early 1960s, before landing the lead role of Colonel Robert Hogan in Hogan's Heroes. The series aired from 1965 to 1971. In June 1978, Crane was living in the Winfield Place Apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona, during a run of Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater. On the afternoon of June 29th, his co-star Victoria Ann Barry entered his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting and discovered his body. Crane had been bludgeoned to death with a weapon that was never identified, though investigators believed it to be a camera tripod. A former friend, John Henry Carpenter, was charged with his murder but was acquitted. 
Christopher George Latore Wallace, better known by his stage names Biggie Smalls or simply Biggie, was an iconic figure in the world of American rap. His raw and authentic style captivated audiences worldwide and earned him a place among the greatest rappers of all time. Uh, on March 8, 1997, Wallace attended a Soul Train Awards after party hosted by Vibe and Quest Records at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Guests included movie stars, rock stars, and members of the Bloods and Crips gang. Later that night, at 12.30 a.m., after the fire department closed the party early due to overcrowding, Wallace left with his entourage in two GMC Suburbans to return to his hotel. A black Chevy Impala pulled up alongside him. The Impala's driver rolled down his window, drew a pistol, and fired at Wallace's car. Four bullets hit Wallace, and his entourage subsequently rushed him to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where doctors performed emergency surgery, but he was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. He was 24 years old.